Hello, my name is Ariel. Welcome to Anointing Hearts Project. Today, I will be explaining semiotics using a presentation about American martyrs entitled American Royalty. Semiotics is called the study of signs. This science was proposed in the early 1900s by Swiss linguist Ferdinand de Saussure and the American pragmatist Charles Sanders Peirce retrieved from the sensual and perceptual theories of visual communications. Signs can carry a variety of meanings. Meanings can change and grow depending on life experience. The two scholars had different ideas about this theory. Quote, Saussure argued that there was no inherent or necessary relationship between that which carries the meaning, the signifier, usually the word or symbol, and the actual meaning which is carried, the signified, end quote. Retrieved from Hamilton, 2021. Quote, Pierce's idea about semiotics distinguished between three types of signs, icon, index, and symbol. Whether a sign belongs in one category or another is dependent upon the nature of its relationship between the sign itself which he called the referent, and the actual meaning, end quote. Hamilton, 2021. In both theories, there is a relationship between the sign or signifier and the meaning. For the signs, the meaning depends on the type used. For the signifier and signified relationship, as Saucier explained, quote, there is no inherent or necessary relationship, end quote. Hamilton, 2021. This would indicate the meaning is dependent on the audience. The culture people grew up in or the education they receive can influence what signs have meaning to them. The region in the world a person grew up in can also create different meanings for the same sign. For this project, I wanted to utilize some universally known symbols but also at a greater depth to represent the eternal. Quote, Meanings can be expressed in various ways through a variety of science systems, language, music, gestures, and so forth. In essence, humans can create, via signs, a world entirely separate from one of direct experience. Life experience creates different meanings for different people. Some examples of symbols are company logos, such as the Nike swoosh, country flags, and religious symbols. For example, a cross for Christianity, a Star of David for Judaism. Symbols used only in American culture may not be recognized in other countries. For this project, the intent was to consider my culture American, and how its elements can be used to symbolize the eternal. For me, American culture can be negatively stereotyped by reality TV, Hollywood, and the 24-7 news cycle. I did not want those elements being related to the eternal kingdom of God. No, I wanted people to think honorably of American culture and the kingdom of God. I took that idea of American stardom and turned it into American royalty. Now, when people think royalty, they usually think of the British monarch. I wanted to crush that stereotype as well. The verse that came to mind was 1 Peter 2.9, and the NIV version states, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This verse honors the kingdom. So I started to brainstorm. What exactly is American royalty? I turned to my copy of Fox's Voices of the Martyrs and looked for examples of Americans. I chose six Americans who had been martyred for Christ. That spoke to me. These people were the true royalty in the eternal kingdom. Their faith stories were honoring and glorifying to God. They acted in a manner of nobility. Nobility falling into that royal priesthood. A variety of symbols were used to create this project. 
One was the American flag to represent the country these people were born in. The flag shows pride in the nation. It is a symbol of freedom. This freedom is also a symbol for the freedom we have in Christ. The cross was used to symbolize the faith these individuals died for. The faith in Jesus these amazing heroes showed gave them their eternal royal inheritance. Without knowing the story of the individuals, the photos just look like headshots. However, knowing the story behind each person, their image becomes a symbol for their royalty. Much like past presidents are honored with their portraits in different museums, these martyrs' images will be shown in a way that honors them. Their images have significance in the eternal because they are with God in heaven in his eternal kingdom. I want the audience to identify the symbols and give them the respect they deserve. The first American royalty is Martin Burnham. Martin and Gracia Burnham were missionaries to the Philippines. They were taken captive for months by Muslim extremists, but kept their faith and kept praying. Martin even shared the gospel with his captors. Three days before his death, Martin wrote a letter to his children telling them how much he loved them. He also told them in the letter to keep their faith. As the Philippine army closed in on the guerrilla group, the leader of the group ordered them to kill the Americans. Martin and two others were killed. His wife carried on sharing the gospel after his death and telling of his story. The second example will be Bonnie Witherall. Bonnie and Gary Witherall were missionaries to Lebanon as part of Operation Mobilization. She had gotten up early on November 21, 2002 to go to work. When she arrived at the clinic, she was met by a Muslim extremist. She was shot in the head three times. Bonnie had worked in that clinic providing pre- and postnatal care to Arabic refugee women she had great compassion for the women suffering under religious law and prayed constantly for them. They had also been sharing the gospel of Christ for about a year before her death. After her death, Gary felt the Lord telling him to forgive. He made a public appearance on Lebanese television, forgiving the murder of his wife. He continued to honor her memory and their faith. My third American royalty is Cheryl Beckett. Cheryl served with the International Assistance Missions for six years in Afghanistan. She was part of a medical team that also preached Christ to their patients. She also led community development projects, teaching locals health and nutritious gardening. She ministered to many suffering citizens. She knew of the dangers the country posed, but was not afraid. On August 5th, 2010, on the way back from a mission trip outside of Kabul, Cheryl and nine others were captured by the Taliban. They were lined up and shot for being Christian. The fourth American royalty is Horace Tracy Pitkin. The 25th President of the United States, William McKinley declared an open-door policy with China in 1898. This gave an open market policy with China. The Empress at the time, Su Shi, saw dangers to her dynasty and called for uniting against foreign devils. A group of radicals called the Fists of Righteous Harmony rose up. They were also called the Boxers. They killed missionaries and diplomats. Horace Tracy Pitkin was a Yale graduate who was in charge of Yunnan's American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions. When the news of the Boxer Rebellion reached Horace, he sent his family home to America, but he himself remained. He was killed in 1890, trying to defend two other female staffers at the American Board Office. After his death, his friends at Yale created a mission society and a hospital in Yunnan in his honor. 
Our final example of American royalty is John and Betty Stamm. John and Betty were both set to be missionaries to China when they met at a prayer meeting in Bible college. Betty went off first to China to serve. Later, they both reconnected in Shanghai and married. They served as missionaries in China during a dangerous time of civil war and the communist uprising. They had their daughter in 1934 and moved to Anhai, province. They had only been serving in the area three months when communist troops invaded. They were quickly imprisoned. In the middle of the night, their daughter, Helen Priscilla, only an infant, was crying. The guards had threatened to kill their child when an older Chinese man, who was imprisoned as well, stepped in. He was killed on the spot. That same night, John was ordered to write a ransom note to the United States government for $20,000. Including in the note, he wrote, The Lord bless and guide you. As for us, may God be glorified, whether by life or by death. They were beheaded the next day. A Chinese evangelist, Dr. Lo, found their infant child hidden away and risked his life to bring her to her grandparents, who were also serving in China. She survived and grew to become a teacher and raise a family in the United States. The church the Stams left behind endured in secret for many years and still exists today. Here is the completed image. This image was created digitally. The cross with the flag in the background was not a stock image, but was created using digital layering. I found the Passion Translation of 2 Timothy 4 verses 6 through 8 but best captures the lives and sacrifices these individuals made. It says, And now the time is fast approaching for my release from this life, and I am ready to be offered as a sacrifice. I have fought an excellent fight. I have finished my full course with all my might, and I've kept my heart full of faith. There is a crown of righteousness waiting in heaven for me, and I know that my Lord will reward me on his day of righteous judgment. And this crown is not only waiting for me, but for all those who love and long for his unveiling. I also chose to incorporate American Christians from different years. I kept the image simplified as to honor and respect the individuals, the flag, the cross, and the word of God. Additional editing and such was removed to keep focus on the symbols. Thank you for viewing this project. Have a great day.